What's going on everybody and welcome to another VTOL VR video. My name is Scary Spikes and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the AGM-88 arm and how to use that anti-radiation missile to take out some radar sites or anything else that might be zapping you with radiation. So stay tuned, let's go ahead and get started. Alright everybody, so let's go ahead and get started with the AGM-88 arm or anti-radiation missile tutorial. Uh, first and foremost, as always, we're going to go ahead and make sure that our master arm is switched to on. And once we do, we're going to get a little reticle in the middle. And uh, on the top left hand corner, we're going to see the AGM-88 arm or anti-radiation missile. And we have six of those, so that's perfect. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is we need to set up our screens and everything that we need. So on the right screen, I generally like to have my nav. And this is going to be just the training map here. We do have Overlord providing us with the targets. However, I've got the comms turned all the way down so we don't have to get interrupted while we're in the middle of the video. Let's just go ahead and turn the autopilot on right now to keep our heading and our altitude as we get the airplane set up. So you can see that we have some targets there over on the left hand side that's going to be in that mountain range there. You can see that we have a couple of diamonds. We have another one over there and another one over there. Uh, if you're not able to see them outside of your HUD, by the way, do make sure that your Himix is turned on. Uh, as you can see there, uh, once the Himix is turned on, you're able to see uh, on the outside of your HUD. You do want to make sure that your visor is down as well. You might not see me putting my visor down, um, but basically all you need to do is just bring either of your hands to the side of your helmet and just click once with the trigger. Trigger. And as you can see, uh, I'm not able to see those diamonds now, but if I put my visor down, uh, the, the diamonds have returned. So just make sure that your visor is down in order to be able to see well. And again, we have our targets provided to us uh, today by Overlord, but you may need to find your targets and scout yourself if you don't have the benefit of having Overlord providing all that information for you. If you don't know what Overlord is or you don't know how to get up and flying, I do have other videos in the playlist, so make sure to go ahead and check the description down below and get familiar with that. All right, on the other screen, uh, once we've got the nav set up, of course, we do need the ARAD. This is going to be the anti-radiation attack uh, thingy. I don't know what the D stands for, but in any case, it's kind of like a radar, but it's basically just a more sophisticated version of the RWR, uh, the radar warning receiver that you have here. And this basically tells you uh, what is shooting uh, a radar at you so that you can lock it up with anti-radiation missiles. So uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to make this display soy. Now I do have to thank one of my amazing viewers who mentioned, which is uh, definitely something that I knew before, but I didn't mention in one of my videos, and that is you can actually change the soy or the sensor of interest, uh, which basically just allows you to manipulate certain things on a given screen with the thumbstick on your right touch controller while gripping the joystick, as seen here. Um, you're able to change that soy simply by putting your hand on the throttle, gripping the throttle, and then flicking the joystick either to the right or to the left. And that's going to help you to select your soy, which is uh, really, really nice. Uh, definitely a nice hands-free approach in order to be able to do that. So thank you uh, to whoever that is <laughs> for uh, for mentioning that in the comments of my previous video. I'll try and see if I can put your name around here somewhere to thank you for that. So I do appreciate that. And of course, uh, if you feel like I've missed anything or you'd like to add anything to any of my videos, feel free to do that. Uh, it just benefits the community as a whole. Okay, we're flying a little fast. I'm gonna slow it down just a little bit here. We're pretty much all set up here. We've got the uh, master arm on. We've got uh, the map here on the left-hand side. We can zoom out uh, just a little bit. We can see that on our left-hand side, uh, we're gonna have some targets. We're actually already past them, so we're gonna just turn around ever so slightly. And uh, we do have the AGM-88 selected there. If you have a multiple uh, sort of loadout going on, you can select your weapon by using the top of the two face buttons on your right uh, touch controller. Uh, simply just grip the joystick. And then if you press the uh, top of the two face buttons on, uh, for example, like the Quest controller, that will cycle your weapon. Now, I only have the AGM-88 arm, and so it's not going to cycle anything for me, but if you do have a multiple uh, different loadouts or multiple different weapons in a loadout, then that is how you're going to be able to cycle your weapon. So with the left-hand screen, the ADAR there, uh, uh, soy, we're going to go ahead and actually just start to come out of our turn a little bit here. And we're gonna go ahead and grab the right stick and using the right joystick on the touch controller, uh, we're gonna go ahead and select one of the targets and we're gonna depress the right joystick or the, the joystick on the right touch controller. Now we're gonna get a shoot cue uh, because we do have 
the right weapon selected. And uh, one thing that I want to bring your attention to is on the right hand side, you see that we have a little chevron there. I'm not sure if you can see that. And it's starting to come down. So essentially, as long as you get the shoot cue, you should be able to theoretically fire and have the weapon hit its target. But in order to increase accuracy and probability of hitting your target, I would certainly recommend that you wait for that little chevron to come into that little box. Uh, as you can see as it has already on the right hand side and that's basically just going to uh, determine uh, or it's going to allow you to get a better accuracy better probability of hitting your target uh, as opposed to shooting when you have that outside of that little box autopilot. we'll go ahead and disable autopilot go slightly nose down and then with the trigger on the right joystick here i'm going to go ahead and rifle off a agm 65 or agm 88 i should say All right, very nice. And then we've got one more here. We'll go ahead and lock this guy up as well. Shoot. There we go. You don't have to be on axes, by the way. Uh, the missile will track itself. It is definitely better if you are on axes, but uh, as you can see there, missile's gonna have no problem in tracking and blowing up the target. And there it goes. So certainly good to be on axes. Uh, what do I mean by on axes? So on axes just meaning that you're basically facing the threat. Uh, one of the disadvantages, of course, is that if you are going up against uh, maybe uh, you know an anti-air battery or something like that, you're going to be basically flying directly into it, and that could be problematic. But if you know that you're just attacking radar and stuff like that, you'll definitely get a little bit more accuracy just by being uh, going directly at it as opposed to firing when you're kind of off axis when it's off on the side. That way the missile does have to do a little bit more work to track that target. Now it being a ground target again probably not going to have too many uh, issues there but you do want to give yourself as much of an advantage as you possibly can. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do one more attack run here with the AGM uh, 88. So we're going to go ahead and turn over to one of our other targets here and unfortunately we don't really have a, um, a way to increase or decrease the zoom on here. I'm gonna go ahead and lock that guy up. And as you can see, that's uh, a little bit further away. We're gonna climb, get a little bit of altitude here, a little bit, maybe four degrees nose up, two and a half degrees nose up, something like that, get a little bit of altitude. And uh, we're gonna try to see if we can blow it up by firing immediately after the shoot command is given. So I'll go ahead and rifle one off. And we'll increase our throttle. Now that is going way up, as you can see there. The elevation of that particular target is also uh, quite a bit higher. So you can see that the missile is doing a great job. Uh, even firing outside of its sort of preferred launch envelope, uh, it's doing a pretty good job in tracking the target, getting up there, and uh, hopefully making impact. And uh, hopefully if it does hit, that'll be a good illustration that these missiles are still very accurate and very reliable, fired outside of the typical launch envelope. Uh, and when I say launch envelope, I mean basically the distance that you fire them at. Uh, you can fire them, as I said, when you have that launch or that shoot command. But again, it's just always good to be on axes if you can afford to be, uh, if it's safe for you to do so, and also to be within that little launch window there. You're definitely gonna have a better chance of hitting your target uh, as opposed to being outside of it. So we'll go ahead and come off the burner here and see if we can keep eyes on that target, see if we were able to hit him. You have to keep in mind that the uh, missiles do have their own, there we go, that's a hit. Uh, they do have their own uh, little rocket motors and stuff, and so uh, they will be able to propel themselves a pretty good distance, but that uh, that will run out at some point in uh, in its trajectory, and if it's not already up at a good altitude, it might not have the speed and the momentum that it needs to carry it all the way down. So we'll go ahead and rifle off another one here. This time we're uh, quite a bit closer, actually really, really close. We're gonna be able to get a nice view of that missile tracking there. Good contrast against the ground. And it seems like it's doing really well. That's a pretty fast little missile there. And there we go, we got a shack right there. That's perfect. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is how to deploy the AGM-88 arm anti-radiation missile. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has, you can help me out in a big way by just making sure to like and subscribe, as well as turn on notifications so you don't miss my future uploads. And uh, of course, come on over to the Discord and have a chat with us. Uh, share your screenshots and videos and VTOL if you are, and of course your knowledge. If you happen to be a little bit more knowledgeable than me, certainly would appreciate that. If you want to go above and beyond, I do also have a Patreon page, which you can get to by following the link in the description down below. And you can also, of course, use the super thanks or become a member right here on the channel. That helps me out 
a lot and uh, thank you so so very much for all of you who have already done that it really does make a big difference and i'm grateful to all of you for your wonderful support that's going to do it for me ladies and gentlemen i hope you've had a good experience and i'll see you in the next video Over no i'm not